Why does it seem like gender identities are exploding right now? Well, billions of years ago, there was only one gender. The me gender. If I wanted to reproduce, I'd split myself in half and make another me. Just like me. But because variety is the spice of life, aka entropy, about 565 million years ago, the tiny organism people of the world started getting fancy. And we got the two genders of mommies and daddies. Now we organisms could reproduce asexually and sexually. Everybody's fancy, everybody's fine. Your body's fancy, and so it's mine. Only girls can be the mummies, only the girls. Only boys can be the daddies, yes sir. Everybody's fancy, everybody's fine. Your body's fancy, and so is mine. Everybody's fancy, everybody's fine. Your body's fancy, and so is mine. This allowed organisms to collaborate to make new kinds of organisms that combine parts of each parent, allowing for some serious creativity to enter the gene pool. Mix my recipe for sensing yummy food from far away and your recipe for swimming long distances, and we have a super-powered organism. That worked well for a long time, but life got even more spice for making more complex recipes so that it could collaborate on more levels. And collaboration is great for increasing health. And the first new basic recipe that Mother Nature came up with was simple physical collaboration, where individuals mechanically attach themselves into larger congregations so that they could help one another and specialize. Specialization means that different individuals can focus on doing just one kind of work rather than trying to do everything all the time. So some individuals explore and create new stuff for the group, while others preserve and protect the good stuff that already exists, allowing the larger system the individuals are in to be more effective and efficient. Many hands make light work. It was a simple solution to improving life, but still required direct physical connection to accomplish. This is when emotional reproduction emerged. Organisms found ways for information to collaborate outside of the individual's genes and bodies, which was slow and obviously limiting. Shorter term chemical, electromagnetic, and other forms of signals started being used to create faster and more affordable collaboration between individuals. Plants could let their nearby offspring or siblings know when there were insects nibbling on them, so their relatives could try to discourage such nibbling of their own body parts by making chemicals that were yucky to the insects. Then, a long time later, life added some more spice to the recipes in the form of intellectual procreation. Now, more complex patterns of symbolic memories and ideas could be conveyed between and about multiple individuals. Culture was the result. We are the people who do this and not that, said us. This was especially useful for families so that parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, and even just good friends could communicate about baby's needs, even when baby wasn't right there. This allowed kids to thrive even more consistently than before. Amusing side note, it took the intellectually capable humans until just a few hundred years ago to realize that animals, like them, usually are not asexual. And humans did this by putting pants on a frog. Seriously. Okay, so with all of these different types of potential procreation, how on earth do organisms know who to mate with and what kind of mating they can do together? Well, 
evolution invented unconsciously conveyable traits that could be fairly clearly understood by generally suitable mates when the time was right. For starters, potential mates needed to clearly label themselves as not food, lest they accidentally attack one another instead of making babies. So, voila, gender expression. Are you a creator who gives new information? or a receiver who protects and nurtures an existing valuable packet of information? And what sort of information are you looking to give or receive? So far in our explorations, we've talked about the spicy recipes for the me gender and the biological receiver, the DNA protecting mom gender and biological giver, the new DNA creating dad gender, and the physical receiver, finding ways to use and care for the group's existing material resources, and the physical giver, discovering and generating new material resources for the group, and the emotional receiver gender, protecting old data, and emotional giver gender, offering new data and the intellectual receiver gender, protecting old ideas, and intellectual giver gender, generating new ideas. And again, some of these different traits can change over time and emerge in different combinations since life is adaptive. So, you could be a maternal DNA protector, a physical receiver, an emotional giver, and an intellectual giver. Or a paternal DNA giver, physical giver, emotional receiver, and intellectual receiver. Or a protector of DNA, materials, data, and ideas. Or any other combination. And you might change tomorrow. And if you happen to be like this, wise old human turtle, you might also be aware of having another kind of gender type on a level of philosophical procreation, where you might be a receiver or giver of extra deep thoughts about the universe as a whole and how it might want to make baby universes. Because human culture and philosophy and art are so diverse at this point in our evolution, we could call these genders or sexual identities, or possibly even political persuasions, or just personalities. In the future, we'll be able to program and maybe even evolve computer companions, game characters, and other software-based individuals to model whatever emotional, intellectual, and philosophical genders we want to procreate with. But of course, for genetic procreation, we'll have to stick to biological organisms. What do you think? Would it be useful for humans to start finding a common language regarding the ways we want to give and receive? And what sort of permanent and temporary traits we might have so that we can more easily find potential collaborative creators at any and all levels at any and all times? What are you personally feeling like these days? Are you in a giving or receiving mood? And what kinds of procreativity, are you most excited about finding a partner to collaborate with? DNA, materials, data, ideas, or getting in tune with the universal laws of physics for some celestial evolution? Something to think about. Namaste.